Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Naked with Dr. Money. I am Dr. Stephanie Ardry, and welcome to another week of Naked with Dr. Money. So today, guys, I'm so excited. You know, each week I focus on conversations around mindset, motivations, and manifestations, as well as sharing, uh, if you will, how I'm managing my mind, body, and soul while building a multinational organization from scratch. So, you know, some days are better than others along that journey. And I found that it's been an interesting exercise of not only in part of that process, making sure that I am feeding um, myself, you know, I'm feeding myself in each of these ways. And so one of the ways that I've been feeding myself and I found it a bit transformational is I've been doing a course in miracles. How many of you are familiar with the course? Well, if you're not, the course is a year long course. And it was interesting because over the years, I was interested in the course, I'll say. Um, I first became aware of the course after I had participated in a training called Landmark. And Landmark was a very interesting uh, training because it really was about setting perspective, setting perspective in your mind and being able to understand how, based on your lens, your perspective, you then take on behaviors. So it means that if it is your information, your lens is faulty, then the behaviors that you take on may also be faulty. They may be off base because you're not operating from accurate set of information or something happens along your journey and you interpret it to mean something that's potentially different than what it means. So anyway, I ended up doing a year of landmark and that was at an interesting period in my life because I had also uh, just uh, completed my master's in organizational management with an emphasis on leadership. And the reason that was an interesting period of time, because I remember when I decided to pursue a MAOM as opposed to the MBA, what that leadership portion of the training included was some of what I would call the um, the psych classes, the overlap with the psych students. And for me, being in class with psych students was the equivalent of someone taking their nails and scratching the chalkboard. Like I was not looking forward to having to share classes with those folks. That's so bad, but I wasn't looking forward to it. So the only thing that really saved me was that one of my professors, I had this brilliant professor who happened to be pretty famous as well. And he had been a practicing um, psychiatrist and then stopped and, you know, was also a teacher. So I ended up gaining him as a bit of a mentor. And so that made my uh, process um, fascinating, but also the tools that I wanted to be able to develop to build my organization. Because again, my interest was being able to build an organization that might have thousands of internal, external stakeholders, you know, associated with the organization, hundreds of thousands of people around the world. That's been my particular intention. So I wanted to make sure that I had all the tools in order to effectively implement uh, those outcomes. So anyway, so I anyway, did the MAOM, uh, ended up being introduced to Landmark. And then following Landmark, about a year of Landmark, I came across A Course in Miracles. And to me, the course would be if Landmark had a textbook. And it's really about feeding your mind in such a way that you expand your perspective. And in expanding your perspective, it gives you a context within which to exist in your life. And so what that does is that sort of shifts how you experience what's going on. It influences your lens in a little bit of a better way. So a year ago, uh, more than a year ago, I'd say a year and a half ago, now maybe almost two years ago, I received strong 
you know, encouragement, I say strong direction from the Almighty and the ancestors that this year, that last year I was going to get through the course because I take I probably attempted the course at least four other on four other occasions. But last year I got through the course. And when I completed the course, I knew that the reason I completed the course was that I was going to become a guide through the course for other people, which made sense because with my wellness organization, it's mindset is such a core about everything. Your mindset influences everything about you. It influences your, your health, your, your emotional health. It influences your physical health because your mindset is what feeds the disease that then manifests itself in your body and then your spiritual health. So it's all related, right? But anyway, um, sometimes folks go, we can't make the correlation. It's like, no, it's all related. Trust me, it's all related. But anyway, so those of you then would understand that having been an entrepreneur, especially the kind of entrepreneur that vision and has vision that oftentimes is 10, 20 years in advance. I've been a futurist all of my life. And so I didn't have, if you will, that vocabulary, that vocabulary wasn't as common yet to explain that. So sometimes you feel like you're a little bit outside of, of what you're hearing and what you're being guided to do because the people around you or not, you know, but guess what, guys, I learned that when the almighty and ancestors give you an assignment, it's your assignment. The reason people around you are not aware is that it wasn't a conference call. They weren't there. They don't know. So it's about you understanding and being able to accept and act on your ancestral assignment. So anyway, anyway, I'm getting a little bit too excited. And of course, I'm getting a little bit long winded here. So I'm going to stop myself because I want to include in the conversation my guest for the day, Miss Desiree Devereaux. So Desiree is, um, I'm sorry, Desiree Dubois, <laughs> tongue tie. Desiree is a, we were fast friends. And it's a funny thing because I knew of Desiree for many years before I had an opportunity to really connect with Desiree. And the second we connected, it was like, you know, this sisterhood immediately ensued. And I remember she came and we spent time together and just felt like you would have thought we'd known each other for, for years, right? So it made sense to me to not only catch up with my sis, but to also talk about motivation, mindset, and manifestation, because she is definitely a sister who's lived her life according to these concepts and has and is a manifesting <laughs> magnet. So without any further ado, I'm going to bring Desiree into our conversation. Hi. Good day. Hi, how are you? I'm just so excited to be able to connect and share and have this conversation not only with you, but for all of those who are listening, all those who want to listen, all those who need to listen to this conversation, because it's the voices you need to hear over and over and over again. Absolutely. You know, what really um, came became apparent to me, and especially right now, someone shared that the, several people, you know, the mental health, the mental health needs are becoming so prevalent, right? Because people are suffering from different elements of PTSD from the global pandemic and all of these other things. And so it became really important for me to think about, well, almost like if they're giving the doom and gloom commentary, how can we flip the conversation and sort of bring in what is the positive? How do we cope with those things and not invest in that, but kind of shift the conversation to our possibilities, our opportunities, our healing, right? So that we can move from, you know, the negativity. It's kind of shifting from is the glass half full or is it half empty? Well, you know, the thing is, is that's interesting because your mind, everybody has a mind, you know, and the, the, the status of the mind is sometimes questionable, but it's your mind is your most valuable asset. I mean, no matter how much money you have, no matter how, how much health, your mind is going to make the difference in everything that you do and your lifestyle. And you and I have both had, that's 
our only asset that we've had because we've both been entrepreneurs at a very young age. I've been an entrepreneur since 12 years old. I've never had a job. So everything had to be in my mind, my dreams of the businesses, the dreams that I could accomplish these businesses, I could succeed in these businesses and I can exit it and do something else or something different and still feel successful. And so it's easy to say it's all in your mind. And it's easy to say that you do have control of it because we do. If anyone would decide to get up right this minute and turn a light switch on or off, we can do that. And you have to think about the uh, things that you're that are on your mind that you want to control. It is that easy to, to like you said, it's interpreted as the good or the bad, or that you can't, no, you cannot, or you have or you have not. All of that is your choice. When you make that choice, though, and say, okay, this is something I can do. This is something I do have. This is something I do want, or this is something I don't want. Then it's just taking the steps and having the brave, you know, being brave and being strong and being persevering enough to accomplish it. You know, and I know there's a lot of, of science and history about subconscious and so forth, but still, we can still make those decisions no matter what we have behind us. Every day is a new day. Every day that we have a, the grace of God to be on this earth, then he's given us another opportunity to make our choices. And it's up to you to make the choices. And the thing is, is that this starts there. And many times there's seeds that are planted along the way when you're discussing about how you, know, you were young and how a lot of these ideas were just in the process. The seeds are planted along the way and they keep reoccurring. Listen to that. Listen to those voices. I know it's, again, there's so much life going on around us. It's hard to hear that noise. Um, but you have to take those moments and just, even if it's just one moment and listen to, if something resonates with you, if there's a song or if there's a picture or if there's a, you see someone carving something or you see someone you know, building something, whatever it is that you see and it somehow resonates with you, take a moment and say, okay, is, why, am I, why is this to my attention? Why is this coming to my attention? And then respond to that. And it doesn't have to be now. You know, it doesn't have to be like this moment. I don't feel because you haven't accomplished it already, no matter what age we are, um, it's still something that you can accomplish. And maybe not the same way. Maybe you have to, like, maybe at my age, I may not be an Olympic <laughs> gymnast or something of that type, but I can still live a part of that dream in another way. I can train or I can provide a facility or I can provide sponsorships or I can, you know, be involved so that I'm able to fulfill that. But just, you know, utilize your mind, protect your mind is the best thing. People let other things get into their mind and that's what uh, can kill your spirit. You know, and that's the biggest thing I said, you know, don't let anyone or anything dim the light that shines within. And that's oh, that's, a, that's a actually a good point that I want to touch on, because I spoke uh, a couple days ago and one of the, the, the uh, I say, hypotheses that I put forward is this idea is mindset part of your nature or is it something that's nurtured? So you mentioned being an entrepreneur from the age of 12. If you were to think about what, what gave you the gall to believe that at 12, you could make money or you could create something? Like, who do you think you are? And <laughs> what was the invite? Like, how did your family react? Like, like you know, Miss Desiree, who, who why, why are you not going to go and get a job like everybody else? Like, who do you think you are? It's so, so funny because I hear that question. I've heard that question a lot along my, <laughs> my, along, along my life. Who you know, that's you what are? they do. Who do you think you are? They used to tell me, they're like, oh, yeah, you breathe in air on a whole nother altitude. Who do you think you are? I am Desiree <laughs> Dubois, who has this dream, this goal, and I don't see reasons why I can't. So, but at 12. See, I, think well, that's I didn't know any better. It's just I didn't know that I couldn't. My family supported whatever it is, so I didn't know I couldn't. Just like people do other things, they jump off of you know do amazing things because they don't think they think they can. They don't. No one's told them they can't. So right. I was blessed to be in the family that my mother was an entrepreneur and my father was you know just open. So I didn't know, and I never had that fed into me that I didn't. I couldn't. And they were supporting me. We had the recitals. They would help me. She'd help me get a sewing machine to make the costumes and things of that type. But so that definitely is an advantage of not knowing that you couldn't and being supported. But even if you don't have that support and that encouragement around you, it's still no excuse. You find that. 
You find that in mentors. You find that in videos. You find that because even all wait, my life wait, wait, Desiree, Desiree, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We're not going to blow this. past that because, you know, yes, you think that those things are doable. And in fact, I'm writing a book the magnificence of mentorship where I'm paying homage to those who were, you know, mentors mm -hmm. who, who gave the time, but I'm going to tell you, I came along at a time as an entrepreneur and so-called mentors and so-called all of these folks, organizations and all of these, you know, opportunities so-called are still presented by people and people didn't always play so fair or so nice. Um, they, they definitely took advantage. Um, they definitely, um, in some cases, just blatantly robbed me because they felt they could and they did successfully. Mm -hmm. um, they caused me a lot of stress. And then to have that with my family. So I'll tell you, yes. the weekend that I packed up to move to Los Angeles, Right after my 25th birthday, I was moving to L.A. to expand my then marketing communications company because I really had been doing very well in the Bay Area, but I've been in the entertainment. So all these folks that I knew by phone were like, wow, if you were here, you know, you have all this extra business and so on and so forth. And I was like, yeah, I'm ready for a change. So let me do it. But I'd never gone away for college. So this was kind of a big thing for me. Right. And the fact that I was moving with my own business, which means that initially I wasn't going to move right into my office yet because I right. had to find it. So I'm living and working out of my apartment for the first time in a whole nother city by myself. And so secretly, I kind of cried myself to sleep for almost six months because I was like, you know, whose bright idea was this on one hand, that whole <laughs> emotional growth that was required. But then yeah. on the other side, I felt so alone in a sense, because it's like, I'm not even going to bump into some dude at the water hydrant in the off, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I haven't moved into that space yet. So mm -hmm. it was this whole other part of getting over and connecting and, and all of those things. Right. And it required me to really dig in on a mindset to fight through that, you know, and, and then I was in a bad accident. So I had the opportunity to escape, but, but, the weekend before I left, this was the point about moving on, how challenging. My grandmother calls and she says to me, you're stupid and you're going to fail. So that was how I left. And I hope you don't get kidnapped and, and raped. You know, it, it, you know, like those were the, the warm fuzzy, <laughs> you know, the words of encouragement. The send off, right? Yes. And yes, I come yes. to LA and then I'm going through all these other emotions and I'm terrified to meet any stranger, right? Because then that my grandmother's part, they're going to kidnap me and, you know, whatever. So mm -hmm. imagine that, you know, you're trying to then go and and build your, you know, opportunity um, to do what it is you say that you are planning to do in this new place. You know, you're having to be bold and, you know, take on, uh, you know, just all of these things. And now your own family has said, you know, you know, you're, 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 you're and so it was my mom that just kind of grabbed the phone and said, and, and said, no, it's, it's okay. It's going to be okay. And she was coming, you know, with the ex-boyfriend to help move me to LA, but it was a rough kind of period of really, really having to dig. That's when I'd say I had to go into mindset 2.0. <laughs> and you've had many moments like that. We all have, if you're going to be successful in business or whether you're an entrepreneur or whether you're a professional, whatever it is, whether you just, you know, if you're just a, parents. And so you're going to have many moments like that where you're going to have to, it's going to, um, you're going to feel disempowered, you know, because the, the reality is clear. Either you get into the obstacles are very, very, very clear. I mean, either you do, you don't, and it's very clear. That's when you, all you have is your mindset. That is when you really, it's going to happen. And it happens throughout, no matter how successful you are and how way, way things go, you're always going to have those moments, but it's just being able to move through those moments and a couple of things that are helpful. Think, okay, what's the worst thing that could happen? You know, what are my backup plans? If it does fail, or if something happens, what can I my backup? And you, and the fact that you just have to know that it's not going to be easy. I mean, we're, it's just not always easy, but it gets easier. My challenges today you know, as in my age, it's much easier for me because I've been through so much. 
you know, and because of those things that I went through, I can, I, I look at them, I deal with people differently. People can, you know, come at you different ways. And it's like, okay, fine. You know, I can deal with that. It's not going to bother me. You mature. It's like you build, and I don't want to say a shield or because I, I don't want that to ever happen to my heart, but you build a resistance and you build a strength that allows you to withstand a lot more, you know, and that's all that it is. I mean, the more times anything goes at, at the waves, it just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. It is not, we're not saying it's going to be easy when we, I mean, we're saying that the fact is that we can move through it. And it's your mindset to say, okay, who is this information coming from? Is it someone that is a path you're following, you know, or is a path that's never been there? So their perspective is completely different. If she's never done that, of course, our perspective is going to be completely different. But from one who went there or who has done that before can give you advice. Okay, do this, do this, do this to protect yourself from those things because people have done it. So sometimes when I'm doing something, I think about, okay, has this ever been done before? And have those people ever survived it? You know? And if that is the case, then what lessons can I learn from them? Sometimes it's people close to you, sometimes people as strangers. When I was taking on this new business at the age I did, I was like 65, people say, well, you should be retiring and why are you starting a whole new business and blah, 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 blah. You're a minority, you're a woman, you don't have a lot of money to work with, you don't have a husband to support you. I mean, you're doing this all on your own. Why don't you just kind of do something that's going to take you to retirement? So I had to, at that time, what I did is I would listen to um, how I built this. It's, just a, it's a podcast with Guy Raz, and literally I would take my iPad at night and I would listen to someone's story and I slide it in my pillow and the next morning I would listen to someone else's story and that got me out of bed. That's what got me out of bed. That's what gave me the strength to be able to get out of bed and go through it. Because I felt like, oh, my gosh, if they could do it. And they had some stories that I had never encountered. And if they can do it and outstanding all of that, then my life is easy. It's just me. So find whatever, if it's a book, if it's a play, if it's a music, if it's there's so much available to us now via the Internet, especially, that find what fuels your fire and then keep it lit. Keep it lit. You know, that's why, so that's why that's so what's baked into my wellness, right? I know the importance of that mindset. And so being able to curate all of those opportunities to continue to have conversations, it's almost like when I thought about the thought leadership that would be great is sort of my way of secretly continuing my journey of all of the lessons and all of the curiosity about new programs and training and being able to have a community that's saying, oh yeah, I want to check that out. You know, yeah, that's going to help me. I'm I'm doing my next whatever, whatever I need to keep, you know, motivated. What else you have, right? Because mm -hmm. it sort of is a practice as yeah. with anything else. It's yeah. a practice. Mm -hmm. As I'm looking at the life of a yogi, it's a practice. And so the practice of managing and developing your mind is ongoing. You're never going to not need to do exactly. something because, and that was, I think, the thing that was the big sort of aha. It's not a one and done. You have right. to continue because you Always. need the mindset and then you need to feed something to trick your motivation. What's going to make mm -hmm. you take action so that then you can manifest? Because people a lot of time talk about, well, I have faith. Well, faith without works is dead. You yeah. got to get motivated to take some action for some things to manifest, yeah. not just praying about it, not just thinking about it. That's, you know, and, and then the, the realization when I realized, I think I said I got far enough along the journey where really in 2020, which is funny that it was in 2020, but 2020, I felt like I had gotten far enough along the journey that it hit me that, oh my God, that nine-year-old little girl that said she wanted to be an international business tycoon, what I didn't understand was that the Almighty and the ancestor said yes. But in order for you to accomplish that, these are going to be the tools and experiences that are going to shape you so mm -hmm. that you can actually end up there. But I, I wasn't far enough along to kind of, like you said, hindsight, be able to kind of mm -hmm. look back and go, oh, my God, this is yeah. I started this. This is mm -hmm. the reason I've been bearing this cross. This was my, I made my like, We have our choices. Exactly. You made the choice. It's your option. You could go on and say, okay, I want to work for this company from nine to five and do that. You have options. You don't have to be on this journey, but you chose this. And I remind myself of this all the time. You chose this. This is their lifestyle. You chose. You can go. There are options out there. And you look at those options, you choose it. And just do what you need to do to do it. You know, just do what you need to do. And there's so many resources. And I think, again, it's, you know, it comes up a lot, you know, and there will be times when you just need to stop. 
and regroup and rethink. So don't think that's, you know, that time is a waste of time or a downtime. It's a valuable time. There's times we get to the, hit the wall and say, okay, now I got to regroup. And that's the time for you to stop and rethink it. And many times you come out, if you do enough research, or if you do go deep enough and strong enough, then you will find that you can overcome it. But it still goes back to what you're saying is it's the mind, you know, and if um, you've got to control, you've got to just so, so many different things and phrases and acumens that you can utilize to kick you through different situations and different times, but you can't let anything or anybody pull you back. And you just have to find happiness in every day and every day. And I think that is that energy is what makes you, um, encourages you. You know, when I'm still happy, when I feel, and to celebrate every accomplishment, no matter what it is, if it's a, you know, a light bulb being changed correctly, it's like, yay, they changed the light bulb correctly. <laughs> and we're under construction right now, and there's a lot of things that I'm thinking like, whoa, 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 but I gotta just celebrate and give them thumbs up for doing something right. And I gotta look for the things that they're doing. I gotta look for the movement. It's not moving as fast as we wanna move it. It's not doing all that good stuff. And we have some challenges ahead of us, but it's like, okay, we are moving forward. And this was a dream and it's being accomplished. And um, that's all that matters, you know, that matters. And you have to assess it yourself. Um, that's interesting interesting that's when you say, um, you know, kind of motivation. So what kind of routine do you use for, you know, your daily kind of keep yourself in balance? Or do you have a routine that you follow that sort of balances your day? I try. <laughs> I'm just, I've never been a structured person, really structured. And that's probably why I don't have a 95 job. I probably would not be good at it, but I've always been able to manage myself. So I do have, I do think it's important to have time for yourself because if you don't feel that you are at your best or can be your best, then you're not going to just like that to the rest of the world. You know, I know we have those bad hair days or bad nail days. We just show up a little differently. So it's important to do everything you possibly can. And even if it's not the way you think it is, then you got to, that's when you kind of go inside and say, well, I know I'm beautiful inside and I'm going to carry that and take it or leave it. Uh, so that you go with, and then you go keep yourself healthy because you know if you're sick, you can't accomplish any of this. So there's really basic things like, you know, rest and food and exercise that keeps you healthy. Because again, all it's all for naught if you don't. And then I think mentally all throughout my day, you know, I'm doing affirmations or I'm reading things or I'm encounter, I'm looking at things. I'm admiring the beauty in a tree. I'm admiring the structure of a property. I'm admiring something, you know, to keep that beauty and that appreciation alive. Gratitude is huge. And I think the minute, the only way that for God to really hit, realize that we really appreciate what he's doing for us and how far he's carried us is through gratitude. So you always want to thank him because we, we don't, I think that we just keep, he just kind of loses direction. So gratitude, I'm always thankful in the mornings and the night. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to go out there and fight this person or do this, do this, or, you know, <laughs> overcome this challenge or think it through or, you know, or believe. I just, and I believe, I believe really, and people call me the optimistic or people, yesterday I said something, well, I believe in miracles. And someone said to me, well, it's going to take one. The couple you want to take. I said, okay, then I'm a believer. So I'm the optimist. And I'm always going to say it can be done. Because all I need is one person in this world to be able to say yes to my offering or two or 17, right, whatever right. the number is. So you have to believe. You have to yeah. be grateful that you have the opportunity. You have a dream. Some people don't have dreams. They can even think about pursuing. Some people were never given the, the gift of dreaming. You know, so that's a gift in itself for us to be able to dream that we even have this option and for us to be able to have the education and experience to be able to pursue this option and then have the resources and the people around us to help us support this option and then to be able to accomplish it. So I'm definitely, we start off with gratitude for that. And then from there. Which is so interesting because I combined my uh, Course in Miracle with a particular gratitude journal that I'm using. And that's how I document document my daily journal um, is both doing the gratitude, what I'm grateful for in each of the lessons and also in that particular day. And then I'm keeping my separate journal because I've always been a bit of a journal being an only child, you know, it's kind of a way of, <laughs> of, of having, I guess, my friend, my journal was my friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a place to go, but I find that you're right. It's in consuming, making sure that I'm clear and setting intentions in terms of what I consume in terms of either, you know, podcast tapes or whatever. Lately, what I've found that part of the process of working through some of the valleys, because, you know, also along the journey, you have peaks and valleys. What I've noticed is when I find myself what I equate to being a bit of a valley or I'm trying to find my way, a couple things um, about two weeks ago. 
I decided to, to do a weekend of silence. Um, mm. In fact, it was a girlfriend who suggested it. And I was thinking that I was really ready for something like that. I'm an only child. That's easy. I'm always doing it. <laughs> but, no, but you're not always silent. We're going. <laughs> I did it the way, you know, she was kind of suggesting. And it was great for me because I disconnected, you know, from any social media and all of those things, which, again, not not difficult to do. But it was such a great weekend because what I did realize, and over the years, I realized that people would say, Steph, you would do great if you could med you know, meditate. Meditating would probably be really good for you. And I can say, I can't. I can't seem to get to that Zen place or whatever, whatever. That is one of the things that I have learned in this last two years and the power of being able to still myself and go into a deep meditative state, you know, as I continue to build that practice, it is so powerful. So this weekend was so fast, fantastic. Oh, that in fact, one of the packages that I'm about to do is literally that, like a five day, um, 420, uh, uh, what, it, what did I call it? Tranquility in Treasure Beach, Jamaica. And so I'm putting that package together because a day of silence, which we'll do only a day in that particular environment because I wanna you know, do a, a number of beauty treatments for everybody through the whole process. But, oh my gosh, does, the reason that people may not hear their dreams and their ancestral assignments is because they haven't been silent. We Thank all you. have assignments. We wouldn't be here breathing, occupying this planet if we didn't have an assignment. Now, if you've heard your assignment or not, I think that's the distinction. Yes. I think yes. that's the opportunity. And so making that accessible to folks who are like, well, I haven't heard. Well, let's take you through some exercises to see if we can help you here. Because probably if we remove some of the noise, then the possibility of hearing will increase. How can you hear if you're on the phone, you're on the TV? You know, who told you about multitasking? All that does is make you dumb. They just determine through studies. It's like, no, focus on one thing at a time. Or I remember I read Eckhart Tolle and he talked about the power of now. You know, stop letting your mind be, you know, taking you on a zombie state. Stop and be present to right now this moment right now, as you were saying, taking in the, the nature, taking the sun, the tree. <laughs> the good things around us, you know, because it's not everything is going to be good, you know, but it's up to you to see the good in everything, everything. And then so many things around us. And I say, you need to be, you need to stop. Some people say, well, I can't stop long enough because I don't have the time. Well, we don't have the time not to stop. Because otherwise you're just moving, you're just going through the motions. So it's just something that you have to do. And I think everybody should find out what resonates with them the most, what speaks to them. So whether it's the meditation or the exercise or walking the park or just being quiet with music or just being quiet or the reading, the listening, you know, there's so much available to us, but find what fuels your fire and then do it on a consistent basis. And it can change. There's so many options we can change, but just you know, decide what you want to do and just don't look at any. Uh, distractions as a failure, whatever you try to do, because a failure is only if you don't start. You know, there's no, for me, it's never such a thing as a failure. Maybe some things didn't turn out the way I anticipated or the way I wanted it to be, but I would have only failed if I never tried. You know, so now I take those lessons that I learned from that, and now I can do it again and maybe not fail the next time or not, you know, be successful the next time because I've got all those lessons behind me. So before we go, and I love that you, you know, thank you for being able to hold space. We have to continue these conversations, um, especially within your community. But before we go, I want to talk about that. So how's business going with homework? Tell us what you're up to. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So is this one of your new locations coming online? What's happening? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, you know, we've been doing homework. It's to where you live, where you work, work where you live anywhere in the world. And that was started in San Diego. And during the pandemic, we realized there was a lot of people um, that were working remotely and post pandemic, even different industries. Now a lot of professionals before it was millennials and creatives, but now it's engineers and accountants and HR people that now could work from home. And they didn't necessarily need to work from home. And then people that say, I'm gonna wait until I retire to travel. Now they could actually travel before retiring and work in that way. So the demand increased tremendously. So we started looking for properties that have 12 bedrooms or more. And we found a beautiful one in Golden Hill, 1905 home in San Diego. And then with that, we said, well, let's 
as people, we ask our guests, where are you going next? Where's one of your favorite places that you've been traveling to? And Mexico came up a couple of times. And we said, okay, well, let's, you know, look at Mexico. And we found Cabo San Jose is a beautiful area of Mexico. Many people know of Cabo San Lucas with the parties and the clubs and all that good stuff, the spring breakers are, but there's a area within minutes, 20 minutes, that's Cabo San Jose. That's right between the airport and that, that is much more quieter. It's beautiful, it's authentic. And we found a um, boutique hotel, which is 13 bedrooms and 13 bathrooms, but it had a restaurant on the property, it has a pool on the property, and it's a gated area. So uh, the property itself is gated. So we're converting the restaurant to a co-working lounge. We're converting the rooftop to a co-working area where it's, we're 236 steps to the beach from the front door. So you're right here at the beach side. Um, you don't have to cross the street across any thresholds. You walk right down the path to the beach. And it's just an amazing property. Um, we're, we're in it now. We were launching in a couple of weeks. We put it on the finishing touches like the curtain rods and TVs and things like that today. And then we are also starting another property, which is in Campo San Jose, which is a beautiful 8,000 square foot home, but it's only three bedrooms and three and a half baths with the casita. So we're going to add more bedrooms and bathrooms to it. It's on the third hold of an incredibly beautiful golf course. It has an amazing view. Yesterday we watched whales jumping and how to take the golf cart from the house to the beach, to the restaurants, the Hilton, and it's just, um, we're going to have co-working lounge, game rooms, gym, theater, the, uh, just all the things that we can do. So the idea of co-working and co-living is that people want to change the way they live and how they work. And yes, you can travel in a hotel. Yes, you can travel by Airbnb by yourself, but it's the community. It's community. You're still alone. And being able to have privacy when you need it, but company when you want it, especially if you're traveling outside of your local area, is really valuable and it's important to be able to connect, to be able to go to events together, to be able to, we do events, we do cigar rolling, we're doing tequila tastings, we're doing wine tastings, we're doing potluck dinners, we're doing Super Bowl parties, we just do all those things where you really force connect. And then many people have traveled together thereafter, they've done business together, one became roommates, and one young lady just had a baby. <laughs> you know, love, you know, so it's just the way of doing it. It's not being isolation, you know, and it's still getting your work done. So I love the, I don't think everything, anything will ever go back to 100% office. So I just love the idea of people being able to work remotely. And now again, the ages are different. It's not just the youngest. We have people up to 70 years old that are saying, hey, my kids are grown and I got a laptop. I, why do I need to stay here and wherever home is? I can get out there and see the world. So we're excited Absolutely. about it. We want you to come on down and get, you know. Absolutely. I can't wait. In fact, I need to bring the, the Beauty Bear team down. We're preparing no to go on a Naked with Dr. Money tour and um, introduce people to 420 Beauty Bear uh, and our wellness, 420 Wellness you know, Resort. So absolutely. <laughs> both of the properties are set up for group events, you know, where you can have right. one for people. So both of them are set up for events as well as the individual. So yes, I can't wait to do a girls weekend or something here. Yes. <laughs> We have everything that we're going to possibly need. So, so if someone wanted to um, find out more about your properties, where should we direct them? Go to homework, H O M W O R K dot com. When you opt in, then you'll be able to get our notices. Our launch, we're going to be launching this one in a couple of weeks. So, you'll be able to get invitations to our launch. And then it's also being able to visit. But another thing, Stephanie, is that, you know, we encourage people to get involved in syndications, to learn more about syndications, because you too can be investing in these properties and these businesses. And the returns are huge from 16 to 22 percent, which you really can't find now in a lot of the markets. So you can be some people like I'm so proud to say to a young lady, you are now an international real estate investor. She's like, I can't <laughs> believe it. So for a small amount of money, you can get involved in investing because that's how syndications, you know, are how all the other buildings, office buildings, commercial buildings. Exactly. Retail buildings and how they're all structured. A lot of people don't know about them. So we do give classes and we have videos on what a syndication is and how you can participate in it. So not only come for the fun, but, you know, get your money working for you. Absolutely. And that's definitely, you know, what I advocate for. So, yes, we can definitely have some more of those conversations. So, yeah, I'll be looking forward to it. I'm looks like I'm going to be stateside at least for another month or so. So uh, definitely making sure. Yeah, I'm prepping for this tour. So hopefully okay. get across the country, you know, before the uh, California bar exam, I have to kind of plan around the bar exam. But outside of that, you know, going forward. Well, Desiree, thank you so much thank for you. joining. Thank you so you know, much. You know. forever. <laughs> no, I know this is gone forever. But just thank you so much for holding the space 
for people who need to hear what we're saying. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, who have listening to us today. And I hope you've gotten some words of wisdom, but more importantly, I hope you've gotten some hope and some love and some light to being able to go forward in the world and be happy and be your best self. Wonderful. And just come, come check out. Just, just uh, come and reach out to us. I'm here to ab- support Absolutely. Well, I will see you real soon. And again, thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah. So, hey, everyone, before I say goodbye until next week, um, I want to thank you for joining in. I got to send a shout out to my sis, Stacy Clark. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And yes, yes, yes. Um, definitely one of my sister friends who are instrumental in so many places along this journey. I want to leave you guys with one thing because I referenced that I have been doing the course. And what I found today's lesson Lesson number 80 is so powerful that if I could share it with you, perhaps you could feel the beauty of this particular lesson. It says that there's one problem and one solution. The lesson is, let me recognize my problems have been solved. So one problem, one solution. Salvation is accomplished. Freedom from conflict has been given you. Accept that fact. And you are ready to take your rightful place in God's plan for salvation. Your only problem has been solved. Repeat this over and over to yourself today with gratitude and conviction. So what I want you to remember is just when something comes up against you today, say, let me recognize this problem has been solved. And with that... I will see you next week. I hope you'll join me again. Thanks so much for allowing me to hold this space where we have a conversation around mindsets, motivation, and manifestations. I'll see you next week. Dr. Steph signing off.